Welcome back, Husker fans, to the DA Husker Fan Analytical Show. I am your host, Derek Arthur. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's October 23rd, 2017. It's a beautiful day outside. Um, this show is going to be about coaching, because <coughs> that's the questions I've been asked. Like, Derek, where's your video after the Ohio State game? I'll tell you where the video is. It was an hour-long video of me using very bad language, uh, calling for Mike Riley to be fired. It was an embarrassment of a game. There was no fire. There was no drive. We couldn't fucking stop a team. Uh, the whole bend and break defense was more of a we broke and we're not fixable uh, style defense, which is really fucking shitty. Like, <clears throat> it's what I'm kind of starting to notice. People say, oh, the 3-4 defense works in the Big Ten. Yes, the attack style 3-4 defense works in the Big Ten. The bend not break defense has yet to be be ran except by us and it's obviously not fucking working uh, <clears throat> so I really don't know what to tell you about that but people are asking me about oh Mike Riley should he be fired should he be retained um, I don't know the answer to that because I'm not Bill Moose uh, I think Bill Moose has was hired and I'm pretty sure he's already made a decision uh <clears throat> Yeah, you don't hire a coach that, or you don't hire an AD who's one of his first statements like Mike Riley's my head coach right now. I will support him entirely. I also have a list of coaches in my fucking back pocket or my gesture to pull out just in case. Um, I don't think you really make those statements unless you know like he's not gonna make it next year. Uh, and that's not my decision. I will support the Nebraska Huskers no matter what. I will support the coaching staff no matter what. I may be very loud about the coaching staff uh, and some of their stuff, but I'm still the coaches. I'm still going to root for Nebraska. I'm not going to root for Nebraska to lose like you, some of you losers out there. Fake news. Y'all are fake news. You guys aren't real Nebraska supporters if you want Nebraska to lose. It's, it's a joke. You're a joke. But let's talk about this. My first inclination was people who say, who said, give, or who are saying, give Riley one more year, uh, are also the people, this is me included, I'm, I'm guilty of this, said the third year of Mike Riley's tenure is going to be the deciding factor for the staff, if they should stay or if they should go. And now I'm thinking the only reason that we're really wanting him is because of his recruiting success. When it comes to recruits, Riley's recruiting numbers are first year, which is technically mostly Bill Pol or Bo Pelini's uh, recruits. They were ranked 30th in the country. 2016, 26. Last year, 24th. This year, they're outside the top 30 thus far. We still got some way to go. We got, what, four months till February? Four or five months till February? Yeah. We got plenty of time to make that go up. Now let's go talk about Bill Callahan's uh, recruiting. His first year, they were rated number eighth. 2006, 21st, 2007, 19th, and his last year, which is technically Bo Pelini's, 2000, or 24th overall. Um, Bill Callahan could recruit. Mike Riley can recruit. The reason I think Bill Callahan was fired is because his recruits weren't living up to the, weren't being coached to the potential that they were of their actual talent. I have a feeling it's the similar way in Nebraska right now. Um, what sucks because we got some really very really talented players on this team but I haven't seen it there's poor tackling there's poor blocking there's poor block disruption there's poor getting to the ball like like a lot of pores with there's there's a lot more negatives in there as positives and it all comes down to coaching I mean there, obviously the player has to have a will a passion to do things but you can coach a kid to his full fullest potential. Like that's that's why you're hired. Like to coach the kids to their potential or beyond their potential. And when you have talented players and they're playing below their talent level, 
makes no fucking sense at all. And that's why Callahan was fired. And that's why we saw we Bo Pelini. I'll give this Bo Pelini with Callahan's recruits played very well, but Pelini couldn't recruit, so he couldn't keep up that fucking potential because his recruits were not on the same level as Callahan's. Pelini was getting just the bare amount, of just the this is the talent level that of his guys to play in his system. Get in there. The reason he succeeded the first couple years was because the talent level was so much higher that they could go farther. But he couldn't recruit. He didn't. Rec I mean, he could recruit. He just decided not to. Let's let's be fucking real for a fucking second. Town is an issue, and that's what that's what I have a main problem with. Like, I'm. I'm looking at my notes, folks. I'm really sorry. This is just not... I'm just so upset. So upset. The whole Callahan era. Okay. No coach... There's only been two coaches in the entire Nebraska history to make it past four years with a winning percentage under 700%. Our standards are fucking high. Callahan got fired after four years. There's only two coaches. One was from back in the 1950s and the 1940s, and the other was the one coach directly after him that had five seasons. The other coach had seven. Uh, our standards obviously weren't high. And the coach that – one of those coaches was then preceded by Devaney, which took our team to a whole new level. People who want to say like, "Oh, no one's gonna want to come coach here because of uh, because of our standards of us firing coaches." Uh, coaches talk. Solis got six years, and he was fired because Steve Peterson was a douchebag. I don't know if he could have taken the team to the levels that Osborne or Devaney did. I think he would have been more of the Pelini standard, the 9-win, 10-win, uh, Big 10, Big 12 championship game here and there every once in a while. Uh, maybe make it to a bigger game, like an Orange Bowl or something every once in a while. Callahan got four years. Pelini got seven. And he was fired because Sean Orkers, Sean Eichhorst didn't like him. And he it was like what he didn't want, which is fine. Like I have no problem. I would call for Pelini's head at, during that season as well. <laughs> that year was also the first year that Pelini didn't get the whole Tom Osborne blessing because Tom Osborne was no longer the athletic director and didn't want to say anything. Each year, if you noticed, Osborne had something to say. Oh, he's doing fine. Give him patience. Uh, be patient. Give him time. I'm seeing the process, and it's working. I remember Vanna was like, oh, Tom Osborne's our god. Yes. Yes, Tom, we'll listen to you. And then that final year was when everybody was like, fucking fire him. Because they didn't have the, the word of the gospel, Tom Osborne, in their ears saying, give him more time. We haven't heard jack shit from Tom Osborne about Mike Riley. Which tells us why fans want him gone. Um, if Riley is fired at the end of the season... Use your 51 fucking million dollars to get from the Big Ten and go get a fucking coach for 5 to $10 million. Fucking get a coach. Pay up. For once in your fucking life. Pay up. I think we have a... I think we have, finally, an athletic director who wants to open the goddamn checkbook. Go get the Bob Stoops. Go get the Les Miles. Go get a fucking coach that is a proven fucking winner. I'm tired of fucking hiring coaches that are of mediocre winning percentages. Bill Callahan had one season of greatness at Oakland with the Oakland Raiders. Went to the Super Bowl with John Gruden's fucking players. Go get John Gruden. Pay him ten million. Give him another five million for his fucking co for his coaching staff. I don't give a shit. Go get a goddamn coach. 
That is a fucking proven winner. Scott Frost right now is not a proven winner. Why? Because it's his second year of coaching. He's 6 and 0 at UCF. UCF, an American Athletic Conference team that really hasn't played anybody thus far. I like I like what I saw this last week against Navy. But it's but it's Navy. Go get a proven winner. A proven recruiter. Please and fucking thank you. If if Riley's fired. If Riley is fired. I think a lot of us fans, the ones that actually like Mike Riley and maybe want to give him another year, know the inevitable is coming. We're a six and a half point underdog to Purdue this weekend. What in the actual... I think we're an underdog the rest of the fucking season, if you ask me. Didn't, didn't Purdue just get beat by Rutgers this weekend that we beat and we're a six and a half point underdog? What is going on with Husker football? I have no idea, but I'm still going to root for them as hard and loud as possible for them to win the game and win out. Four and one for the rest of the way. I think we'll have a discussion with Mike Riley to possibly stay for next year. Anything below 4-1, and one, I think the inevitable happens. And we keep it close. We play better versus Penn State than we do versus Ohio State. That's what really matters right now. If we come out and play with a little bit of fire. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Instead of zero. Versus Ohio State, we played like there's two twigs that we had to rub together. But we're like, yeah, you know... It's dark out, but, like, we got the moon, right? That'll be enough light, right? No, it won't. won't keep it fucking warm, will it? All right, folks, that's all for this little coaching. I'm sorry. I think the inevitable is going to happen. Go, Nebraska, open up the fucking paycheck. I know we're opening up the paycheck because we're going to owe him a lot of money. We're going to still owe Bo Pelini a lot of money. We're going to owe an I-Course a lot of money, but... We have fifty-one million dollar re- million reasons, call cha ching cha ching cha ching my money, to go get a proven winner of a coach. Please, dear God, go get a proven winner. That's all, folks. As always, be loud, be proud, go big red. <laughs>